Swat cheek from Pandey. Swat cheek from Pandey. She not really too much noise, is she? No, we should be able to cut the phone. What you gonna do about it anyway? <laughs> yeah, cause she knew I was filming at 11 and then talking about um, some, yeah, I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm hungry and make breakfast. But she sat in bed for another hour. <laughs> so you shut her down. down. We're filming down here. <laughs> it's recording? Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, BB gang, it's Shy. And today I'm solo, Zolo, because I'm gonna be talking about the protective style journey I did from 2017 to 2018. So, if you're interested, keep watching. <laughs> Alright, so, in 2017, I decided to do a protective style challenge because my hair was just, like, plateauing. I wasn't seeing a lot of growth, and I needed to retain some length because I wanted to have some inches. So, I found this video on YouTube. I'll um, link her video in the description, but she basically did a challenge for a whole year where she only did protective styles. So, like, wigs, buns... Um, braids, anything like that. So I'm like, ooh, that's a good idea. I want to do it. Because I had some length, but it just wasn't enough for me. You know how we want to be draping all, all summer, all year. So I was like, mm, let me give me some length. So I started in September of 2017. And the first thing I did was I started a diary in my notes. So I planned out the time frames. I planned out when I was going to do lymph checks, um, protein, protein treatments, and all of that. So if you are interested in doing this, the first thing I would do is get together a diary, plan out your hairstyles, plan out your time length, and all of that. So um, first things first, for those of you who don't know, protective styles are pretty much any style where your hair is going to be protected. So like I said, buns, braids, crochet, wigs. I was doing all of that. Um, and then also I did it because of the benefits. So when you do a protective style, your hair is obviously protected. You know, the ends are covered up. It's free from um, any like potential heat damage or just any type of um, over manipulation. So um, that was um, a couple benefits that I really liked. And then you can just change up your styles, um, give some versatility because we all know black hair. You can do pretty much anything with it. And then um, it makes it easier for... For me, personally, it made it easier for my hair to grow and for me to retain the length because I wasn't constantly combing it, putting my hands in it, and all that good stuff. So, I decided I was going to, again, do a year. Some people did six months, but I, don't, I didn't think that was long enough for me because I have read that we usually retain about six, in, well, we can retain six inches of hair growth a year. So, I wanted all six inches. So, I said I was going to do a year. Started in September, so I put that in my notes. And then that's how I started documenting my journey. And also, you want to take pictures. So I kind of am not the best person at, like, taking pictures to document. I'm more of so of a writing it down, doing my lip che checks type of person. But I will be including some pictures at the end, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So I'm actually going to um, show y'all a clip of my um, diary in case y'all want to do it the way I did it. So... Yeah, let's take a look at that. So like I said, I started in September of 2017. And so then I've always had like a goal of one day in the future. I don't know when. <laughs> one day in the future, I want to straighten my hair and I want it to all be one length and have a nice like little even blunt cut with a middle part. Like for some reason, that's just like how I envision my hair one day. So my hair isn't even. Like it's just not. So, in February of 2018, I was like, okay, I'm going to cut my hair just to get it a little bit more even. I'm not going to, like, cut it all the way because then I'd be bold. So, I cut three inches on the sides and the back. So, it like, went from, like, here to here. So, yeah. I was, yeah, I ain't had nothing. So, but I didn't care because I was doing my protective styles and I knew it was going to grow back. So, um, then that meant that I had to like push back my end date because I wasn't going to accomplish growth from February to September in the same year. Like I just wasn't going to get nowhere. So I was like, well, if I cut it in February 18, then I'm going to have to end it in February 19. So technically my journey is over and I think I did grow it back to where it was. So once I, um, plan everything out, 
then it was easy after that. Like I was just um, making sure every month I was doing a different style. I would obviously have to keep going back to the beauty supply store, but it wasn't an expensive journey because I was repeating some styles every couple of months and I was doing a lot of crochet styles. So if I did box braids in June, then like in October, I would do them again because I would save the hair. So it wasn't really like an expensive type of thing to do. And I mean, you don't have to do crochet. You can do whatever you want. Me, I'm extra. So like I was getting faux lux, which, you know, maybe a hundred or so dollars. Then I was getting lemonade braids. Like I was really being versatile, which was fun because I mean, typically who really like does a different hairstyle every month. So it was just a cool thing to do. And then also making sure I kept up with my um, protein treatments because although you're protecting your hair, like if you just leave it in those styles and don't, don't moisturize it or do anything, like it's going to be dry and it's, you're going to have a lot of shedding. So making sure you keep it moisturized in those styles, doing hair massages, oiling it properly, all of that. So I think that's another reason why I was able to grow my hair back. And when I, once I took my styles out, I wasn't feeling like it was dry and I didn't have a whole bunch of shine. And we're going to jump into the styles that I actually did. So it went from 17 months. So I probably did about 10 or so styles. So take a look. So the first style I did was box braids, and they were crochet box braids. And um, I kept those in for the first month of September. And really, I mean, you can, you don't have to change every month, but that's just what I did because, you know, that's what I wanted to do. So, yeah. Aren't these cute? <laughs> All right, so then for October, I did kinky curly hair. So I got this hair from um, a hair show. And it came in like three different bundles. And so then um, I would just like take each piece and put it through the crochet needle and then put it through my hair. Now that style, it kind of took a while to do just because you're working with like individual curls. But again, it came out really cute. And I was able to keep it in for that whole month. I didn't feel like it was getting like tangled or matted or anything. I just would... Um, put a scarf around it like a pineapple and then put my bonnet over it and it kept it good for the whole month. Then for November, I wanted to branch out and do something new. So I did a wand curl wig. Now, it came out cute, but it was my first time doing it. And it was just, it was a little difficult because I had bought, like they have wig, wig caps with holes in it that you could buy from the beauty supply store. But, like, the band is kind of thick. So, like, I had to, like, push it back so then you could see, like, my hairline. And then I was kind of, like, self-conscious that it looked a little interesting. But, yeah, I think it was cute. So, then for December, I did crochet faux locks. Um, again, got those from the beauty supply store. And I was able to do those, again, somewhere along down the line. Because I was able to keep them nice. Um, but for this one, I did the individual method which took forever, but it was cute. So what I did was I parted my hair and like did individual braids and then I would put my hair through the crochet braid. And it made it look more natural instead of like doing the cornrow method and then putting the um, locks through the cornrows. So yeah, that took a while, but it came out cute. I had that for actually, I think I Took it out after two weeks and then did it again just because I wasn't satisfied with how I did it. Again, I'm extra. Like, do do what works for you. But I had kept it for that whole month but just did it over. And then for January, my birthday month, I got lemonade braids. And so, yeah, I was cute back then. I went to Cancun, had my lemonade braids. Was in the water, dipping and diving. And um, kept those in for the whole month. I could have kept those in actually longer. I think I ended up keeping those six weeks. And by six weeks, it was, they were still looking good. So, again, if you get like get it done professionally, you can even stretch your styles longer. In February, I had a one curl crochet wig. So, this one was different. Um... Oh no, this, it was one curl crochet, so it wasn't a wig. I just took the hair and put it into my braid. So it wasn't a wig, it was the crochet, but it was a different curl. These curls were tighter. Um, it did look similar to the wig, but again, it was a little shorter and the curls were a little tighter. 
And I think I did keep that in for the whole month. Because, again, I would just, at night, I would put my scarf on and then I would um, put my bonnet on. So, yeah, that kept very good. Then for March, oh, this is when I did my um, small Senegalese twist. And so, um, yeah, again, they're kind of like the box braids, but they were small twists. Did the same thing, put my cornrows in, then I crocheted them through to my hair. So those are really cute. I actually did those a couple more times because, again, those lasted a while and I was able to reuse them. And then April, I made another wig. And this time, it was tight, short curls. Oof. I had a love-hate relationship with that wig because... It was cute, but again, like, I was self-conscious about the band. Like, I didn't want people to be like, mm, where the hairline at? So, yeah, I mean, but the good thing about wigs, like, you can wash your hair, um, like, every week if you usually do that. And then when you don't have the wig on, you know, your hair can just be chilling. So that's that's one thing I liked about wearing the wigs. Like, wash your hair more often. You, it's easier to um, do scalp massages when you have the wigs, too. Then on to May. Whew, May was interesting. So I wanted to try the um, rubber band method for the box braids. Mm, I would never do that again. It took way too long. And I think, because I did jumbo box braids. And I think they like weighed my hair down too much. And I'm not sure. I don't have proof. But I feel like it kind of took out a little bit of my edges. My edges are already thin. And I think it took out a little bit of them because, like, they were just so heavy and it was kind of hurting my head. I only kept those in for a week, okay? I went on vacation. As soon as I came back, I took those out. I just could not do it. But they were really cute, as you can see. I mean, they came out good. So, took those out after a week. And so then I put in the crochet box braids back in because I knew those was going to last longer. They was trusty and all that. Okay, June. June. June was a cute month. Again, I went back to my girl, China, and I had got some faux locks, but I got them in a bug. Girl, I was too cute in June. And those kept in for like six weeks too. I probably could have kept them in longer, but the only thing is I didn't want my hair to start dreading up. So I was like, let me just take these out and, um, so I don't have any issues. But yeah, they were really cute. You could, um, and I did a side part. No, I told her do... Do it so I can have a middle part and a side part. So, again, adding versatility to a style that's already cute. Therefore, July. Oh, yeah, I went back to my girl, China, got in the feeding, um, feeding ponytail. That was really cute. Like, anytime I go to China, my hair going to be cute, and it's going to last a long time. So, um, I wore that to the um, Beyonce concert. I was cute that night. I was cute that whole month, actually. I was cute that whole year, okay? Then... For August. So, because the feeding ponytail lasted so long, it, like, went into August. And so, then I took it out for, like, the second week. And then I was rocking just, like, a low ponytail. So, a tip is, instead of, like, doing protective styles, like, every single day of the year, like, what I would do is I would kind of give myself, like, a week break in between styles. And I would just, like, wear a low ponytail or wear, like, a bun or something. Again, that's up to you, but that just kind of, like, gave it, my hair a little break from, like, the tension that it would be going through throughout the month. So, yeah, for August, wore a little ponytail for a little bit. Then, mm, 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 changing my life for September. I had got a wig from my girl, Kiara, um, her blush collection. Really cute lace front. It was a 360 lace front. Good price and everything. I'll leave her information below, too. Um, and I wore that for, like, two months and I would just either put in cornrows or if I was lazy I would just like do little dookie braids <laughs> but just make sure they was flat so you didn't see no humps in my wig but yeah I was wearing that for a hot little minute and so I have tons of pictures where those looks were cute so as you can see I was doing it doing it real nice so yeah that was September and October and then for November I did large Senegalese twists and I usually get my hair from um, who Beauty For You. Um, I go to the one in Largo, but they they got Beauty For You's in Waldorf, Oxon Hill, if you're in the DMV area, yeah. So I got those from there. So they're usually about like $8 a pack. Not too bad. So I usually get like six to eight packs. But again, you keep reusing them. So yeah, 
those were cute kept those in for that whole month of november and then december came i went back to my wig and then i also gave myself a break like when i wasn't wearing the wig i would just do like a bun high bun or low ponytail again now let me tell you one thing about this wig okay i loved it i loved it dearly but what i was noticing was that like the got to be glue was like breaking out my hairline like I don't, I don't have time. Like I'm trying to grow my hair. I don't have time to be breaking out along my hairline. So that's when I was like, mm, I'm gonna fall back off this wig. And I haven't worn that wig since December. Like it's still sitting on my mannequin head, looking a little dusty. Like I will pull it back out one day, but I'm gonna have to figure out some other type of glue because I can't be going through that. So now we're back to January, my birthday month again, and I got some, what you call them, B braids. Yeah. So um. I had those in for a while, as y'all can see. Like, I had those in for a couple videos. And the girls said to tell me, all right, they're getting a little fuzzy. I'm going to need you to take those out. It was mainly Z. Nah, she be doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, those actually lasted for five weeks. So, again, stretch out your styles. Get your money's worth, okay? And so, that brings me to February. So, I did end up taking them out. Today is February 17th. No, February 18th. I ended up taking those out like last week so I haven't done my lip check yet like I'm dying to see how much growth I got so this is a wash and go I did this is like day Friday Saturday Sunday Monday so this day four and it's already looking interesting so let's go ahead and do this lip check okay so yeah February 8th 2019 ended my protective style journey like I said, I had to push it back because I had cut my hair last February. So, when I started out, okay, so this is another little thing that I messed up on one. I didn't do a limb check in September of 2017. I did it in November. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, in November of 2017, I was 10 inches in the front. So, like, this part. And then in the middle and the back, I was nine inches. And on the sides, I was nine and a half. So then once I cut it in February, it was six and a half and six inches on the sides and back. And then in the front and the middle, it was nine inches and nine and a half. So I wanted to retain six inches of growth. So that means I needed to be 15 in the front. I know I didn't make that because another problem is I get scissor happy. If I feel like my ends feel scraggly or if I feel a single strain out, I'm cutting. Like I'm, I'm snipping, I was snipping for 17 months and I was getting too happy. So that's another reason why I think the front didn't grow as much as it could have. And then, so in the middle, I will also need 15 to 16 inches. Cause again, like I need everything to be even or one left. The size 11 to 12 and the back 10 inches. So, I think my, I definitely have type 4 hair, but the sides are looser. Like, I think the sides may be, like, 3C. Um, and I feel like because they're looser, the sides grew faster. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just what I think. Like, the sides in the back really grew the most. And so, um, I'm going to insert another picture. I forgot to do this earlier. I'm going to insert another picture of how my hair was. February of 18 and how it was this February of 19 because it definitely was a difference. You could definitely tell my growth. So anyways, enough talking. Let me see. The front. So now I don't have a mirror with this, so we just going to have to do what we can. And then also like it's not wet, so it's not going to be its full stretch potential. So we're just going to make it work. Okay. I'm gonna put this here and turn it this way so I can see it. Put this here and then drop this down. So I think this is at, it's a little under 10, but I mean, it's not enough to be um, 10 and a half. So yeah, it was like down here. So the front is 10 inches, um, which actually isn't bad because that means I'm back to where I was in the beginning after cutting for like a whole bunch of time so that's not too bad um actually and my hair is instant and oh i forgot to mention that i did do a um a trim before i did my um birthday braid so i did get a trim last month so 
yeah, it's definitely gonna be my chin. So that's the front, it's thin. I'm gonna do this side. Let's see what we're doing here. I'm basically messing up my hairstyle, but I do it for the baddie bunch. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have to comb this curl out, y'all, because I can't get it to the bottom. Okay. This is so hard without a mirror. So, I feel like that's. I need to comb this out, y'all. This is hard. Okay. I think I'm at my root. I don't know. I'm at somebody's root. Okay, so I think this is at 10, which I think that's a little shorter because it was um it was a little longer than that because I got a trim last month, so you know what it is what it is. So, so far I'm at 10, 10. See the middle. I think that's the middle, y'all. And the middle is always the hardest to do a bench check on. I'm at the roots. <laughs> okay, I think I'm so. Ow! So I think this said nine and a half. Okay, and then let's do the back. And this is, I don't know if I mentioned this, this is a wash and go. But I haven't done a wash and go in 17 months, so it was real interesting. Had to figure out what products even worked, what method worked. Okay. Comb this out. <laughs> this is kind of funny and awkward. Okay. I think that's at nine and a half, too. Okay, so that's not too bad. So I'm 10. 10, 9 and a half, 9 and a half. So obviously, yeah, I missed the mark on the front and the middle, which I knew. But the sides and the back, I pretty much reached that. I mean, I feel like it would be better if I did this on wet hair because then it would be like fully stretched. But I wanted to get to like 11 to 12 on the sides. And I think I'm at 9 and a half or 10, which ain't too bad. And then in the back, I wanted to be at 10. And I think I'm at 9 and a half or 10. So I did actually retain a lot of length on the sides and the back, which I knew, because they are, um, it's a little looser in the back and the, and the sides. So yeah, I'm actually happy with it. I don't know if I'm going to keep on going or if I'm going to just start doing styles. Like, I do miss my hair. And this wash and go came out cute. Like, I was, I didn't know if this was going to come out good because I haven't done one. Like I said, my last wash and go was September of... 2017 when we went to Made in America. I'm gonna try to find a picture. I had a little cute little mohawk. But yeah. So I think that concludes solo dolo time with Shy. So thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought. I'm up next. <laughs> and now you gonna do that while we oh, do yeah. this in it. So we was <laughs> over here. You gonna have to straight talking to me and so I mean, maybe I heard your best show. Cause you cackling. You probably didn't even. You done? Or you finished? <laughs>